Hi everyone, in this video from Count Backwards from 10, we're going to talk about cerebral autoregulation, what it is, what affects and changes it, as well as cerebral perfusion pressure. So the first thing I want to do is define cerebral perfusion pressure. Cerebral perfusion pressure, or CPP for short. And cerebral perfusion pressure is equal to the MAP, or the mean arterial pressure, which is systolic plus two diastolic pressure over three. So MAP minus ICP and then or CVP, whichever is higher. So if we look at it from a diagra diagrammatic standpoint, here's your blood vessel and this here is brain tissue within the skull. The map would be equivalent to the mean arterial pressure that's keeping this vessel stented open as blood flows through it in this direction. While the intracranial pressure is the pressure from the brain and from the CSF and from everything that's pushing down on the blood vessel. Therefore, the difference between the two is equal to the perfusion pressure or the amount or the, the amount of pressure that's being generated that's actually perfusing through the brain. So a normal ICP is about 10. So I'll write that here. And a normal map can be anywhere from 60 to 160. Meaning that a normal cerebral perfusion pressure, CPP, can be anywhere from about 50 to 150 millimeters of mercury. So we have to remember that the cranium is a solid vault, unlike the skin that can stretch and accommodate when you have a welt or bruise, small changes in intracranial blood volume or tissue volume, like with tumors or <clears throat> edema, swelling, etc., can cause massive changes in the amount of intracranial pressure. And again, this comes back to the concept of compliance, where compliance is equal to change in pressure over change in volume. And when you have poor compliance, very small changes in volume have a very profound change in pressure. And that's because the, the bone of the skull can't expand to accommodate the increased amount of volume. So that's why we do you know, craniectomies and such for increased ICP sometimes. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase this. And the next thing, the next part of this, now that we've just defined our cerebral perfusion pressure, is understanding the concept of cerebral autoregulation. And what it is is the brain's ability to increase or decrease its blood flow between maps. So really it's the brain's way of maintaining an appropriate cerebral perfusion over a wide range of blood pressures by either vasoconstricting or vasodilating in response to changes in either the intracranial pressure or to the mean arterial pressure. So let's take a quick look at our cerebral perfusion pressure curve. I'm gonna draw that here. And on the y-axis, we have milliliters per 100 grams per minute. And on our x-axis is pressure in millimeters of mercury. And we'll go ahead and make a couple marks here. We'll say that this is about 50, and we'll say that this is 100, say that this is 50, say that this is 150, and 200. And so what a normal curve is going to look like is something approximating this. 
meaning that between maps, right, because this is our map down here, between maps of about 50 to 150, 60 to 160, the brain is very good at making sure that its blood flow stays at about 50 ml per 100 grams per minute, either by vasoconstricting or vasodilating, depending on what it needs to do. So it's pretty straightforward. So that's why uh, attendings in the operating room may urge you uh, to ensure that you're keeping your maps adequately high uh, or adequately low so as to kind of reduce the risk hopefully of developing a stroke or anything like that. Now the one last thing we need to touch on while we're here is chronic hypertension and we're going to write that in green and its effect on this graph. So as we all know patients develop physiologic adaptations to an increased pressure over chronic amounts of time. As a result, it shifts the curve to the right, so it's going to look something more like this here. And I'll go ahead and mark its pressures in purple here. And this shift to the right is because the body is used to seeing higher mean arterial pressures. And again, this happens over time. And what it translates to is that the patient then becomes dependent on chronically higher pressures to maintain their normal cerebral blood flow. This means that it's especially important in patients with chronically high blood pressure to ensure adequate MAPs, more so what they're used to at blood pressures, systolics of 140 over, say, 100 instead of 120 over 80. Uh, this is also especially important in patients with history of uh, things like strokes or any type of surgery in which positioning could decrease cerebral blood flow. So that's all for cerebral autoregulation. Uh, I hope this was clear and simple. As always, if you have any questions or concerns or interested in getting involved, please feel free to contact us. Subscribe below, follow us on Instagram for daily content, and stay tuned for the next video.